evening everybody welcome back to the channel i hope you're all doing so well feeling cozy because we're in well we're leading up to autumn i don't actually think we're in autumn yet it'll probably be autumn when i post this video um if you're new here i'm Maisie. I'm 25 and I am a dog groomer from the UK and I thought we could have a little chit chat this evening, have a cosy night in and I thought I would also actually do the Q&A that I was supposed to answer two weeks ago about why I gave up my business and I've gone back to working for someone else. Um, just because I feel, firstly so many people are asking me questions like why I've given up my business and secondly... I just want it to be like a safe space for people that have a business and don't feel good in that area and want to go back to being employed but feel a little bit embarrassed by it um, or like they're not good enough. So to give a brief background, I opened my business back in 2020. I opened a small dog grooming salon that was just run by me and I did everything, all of the admin, all of the bookings, all of the cleaning, all of the calls, literally absolutely everything, tax, insurance, everything I did everything it massively opened up my world um, it made me respect my mum so much more because both my parents run their own businesses my mum is a freaking boss like sh I got brought up by a single mum and she worked her ass off to provide for us and it's so freaking hard I don't know how she did it I do not know how she ran her own business with two children it, it really made me respect her in that sense and it just taught me so much about like my self-confidence and what I was capable of and how much work it really was to progress quickly in an area. So I'm so grateful for that. Um, but the reason that I really wanted to be self-employed was mostly for freedom. I thought it was gonna give me a lot of freedom, time to relax and have time off and not work as much and earn a little bit more, but it, it just wasn't like that at all. The reason I have gone back to a business uh, it's a mixture of things so I'd say January this year I really started to doubt my decision on whether this was right for me and a few reasons why I started to doubt whether being self-employed was the right thing for me was firstly I'm a massive people pleaser and I don't think people pleasing goes well in business because you need to have boundaries one of the things you need to be really good at is setting boundaries and I am awful at it literally awful um someone would ring me on my day off and i'd be like oh yeah it's fine and I, I think when you're running a small business as well your relationship with people is really personal so it's even harder to be like no i'm not gonna do it you're just like okay i'll just squeeze you in and then you end up working your day off and in, in january there were so many people just not showing up or being like like i don't think a lot of people understand like if you do not show up in January or you reschedule, like people would ring up on the day and be like, I'm not coming in. And then they just wouldn't pay a cancellation fee. Like they just wouldn't pay you. And like people just wouldn't pay me as well. Like people would come, have their dog groomed and be like, I've forgotten my card and then just not pay me. And that was really getting to me because I find confrontation really hard. Um, and like I said, running your own business, I feel like you need to be quite good at that. And I am not. Anyway, in probably about May time, a local salon reached out to me and basically suggested that one of the stylists was going to leave um, to become a vet nurse and they were looking for a groomer with a fear free slash holistic approach and it turns out someone that worked there I had previously worked with is the only groomer I would ever work with again and I just thought <sighs> initially I was like no like I'm not giving this up and then on second thoughts I was like I have so many anxieties and I literally can't sleep at night and <laughs> I get so overwhelmed by running my own business it's not really what I truly wanted I, I wanted a lot of freedom I wanted time to like be present for Sam and my partner and if we ever had a family and also I truly believe that I was gonna earn a lot more than I did because like people just don't show up or don't pay. Um, my wage wasn't that great. And also I didn't really take into account when I first started my business that I'd have to pay tax and business expenses. I didn't realize quite how expensive that was and how much I truly have to work to actually just cover those costs because there was a lot of times where I kind of thought, 
maybe I could just be part time and then do another job at the same time. But if I worked part time as a groomer, I would literally just cover my business bills and I wouldn't be able to, I wouldn't get anything from it. So there was just no point. Um, so a company reached out to me in May and I decided I would just go along and have a chat and if it didn't feel right I wouldn't go through with it and if it did feel right um hopefully they would be interested so I went down had a chat it wasn't really an interview I just kind of got shown around and it was very casual um I was very very apprehensive about being back in a salon um because of my previous experience Previously, I'm truly grateful for my previous experience because I worked with so many groomers, so many dogs and got put through a lot of stressful situations. But on the other hand, it wasn't ran how I would personally run a salon, hence why I left. And the dogs were often treated as, I've got a really bad cough, I'm so sorry, products rather than animals. And that really bothered me because in the grooming industry every dog has to be done in two hours or under two hours and that's just not okay not every dog is like that not every dog is going to be the same at every appointment they're going to be different different things are going to stress them out different times they're going to take different amount of time to groom sometimes they're going to be matted sometimes they're going to be naughty sometimes they're going to have had an upset stomach the week before there's so many factors into how long a dog can take so I was very apprehensive about going into a salon that was working dogs back to back, getting them in just to make the most amount of money and not being truly aware of their welfare. Um, but after chatting um, with, with the practice manager, because I now work in a, in a veterinary practice, um, which was another thing I was very unsure about, but I can assure you it's been incredible and there have been no issues with any of the dogs in the veterinary practice. I felt very reassured. Um, I obviously made a big point of saying like I have a very holistic approach, I don't always groom the dog's restraint, um, I'm, I'm cautious that some dogs don't like other dogs, is there other things that you do in your salon so that that can be an option and honestly just all of my answers, all of my questions just got answered since being in the salon, I've been there just over a week, I feel completely free I go to work, I do my job. The routine is a lot better for me. I work better with routines. Um, and I think with me working from home, I found it very hard to set a routine for myself. Like if I'd have a spare hour, I probably wouldn't get back to people. I'd just faff around doing loads of other things. Whereas when I'm out of my house in a salon in that hour, I'm gonna reply to everyone. I'm gonna get all of the emails done and it, it's just, it's more structured for me and that works better for me. Um, very chilled environment um we're doing three four dogs max which i personally would recommend to everyone breaks in between most dogs even if it's 10 minutes um there's always help because i'm in a practice there's always someone higher than me that's more knowledgeable that can help in a situation there's always someone that can help if you cut a dog by accident or you notice something on a dog that you don't feel looks great you've got someone for a second opinion um my pay is fantastic. I get holiday pay, I get sick pay. And another thing that was majorly stressing me out, not that this is something that me and Sam are kind of ready for yet, but I was so concerned with not having a maternity leave. Um, I think because I got brought up with my mum, just my mum, and she had to work so hard, I feel like the relationship between us is very, it's quite distant, it's not super close and for me like my priority is I just want so much love around me like I want to be fully present and in the moment with all of the people I love and I felt if I had a baby I, I would want to be there every moment and I would want to have a full maternity leave to really experience that and love and create the best environment for it and I just didn't feel that I would be able to do that firstly I'd have to work a lot to be able to get maternity leave um and we'd probably have to wait a very long time before that was a step for us and secondly I didn't want to be consumed by my work and people messaging me after work if I had a family and I, I know like you can get a second phone and turn it off I did that it still doesn't work for me whereas when I'm in the salon 
they have to contact the salon, not me personally, and then I can go home. And when I'm home, like, I, I haven't known what to do with myself. I have so much time. And I just have so much time to focus on all of the other things I truly enjoy. enjoy. Um, I really want to film more. That's something I love. Cooking is a massive thing for me. Um, and yoga and going to the gym and being out with my friends and going outside without having something in the back of my mind that I need to do for work. But I just feel like a huge relief. I feel like I can finally breathe. I think from my perspective, if you're going to run a business, you have to be like consumed by it like it has to be your obsession like your love and don't get me wrong I love grooming and I love working with the animals and it's a very good job for me creatively love that but I am not obsessed to the point that I want it to be my entire life and I want to go on every grooming seminar and I, I want to be at every event and I feel to have a super successful business you kind of have to be like that and I didn't feel like that and that's when I knew something had to change and I also wasn't upset about leaving my business and I thought that was a huge factor for me. I've been talking for ages. If there is any other questions, leave them below. Um, I will try and answer them. But I'm gonna go downstairs, we're gonna make some dinner together, we're gonna have a cozy, cozy dinner. I don't know whether I want a vegetable carbonara, or, oh, those little pigeons, or a jacket potato with beans. I think I'm gonna make pasta. So we're gonna have a nice, cozy night together, make some pasta, and yeah, I hope that has answered all of the questions. So we've been on the hunt for like what our sofa and what our bed's going to be like in our apartment and we went to Ikea as you would have seen last week and the sofa that we thought we liked we didn't like and I've been searching on the sofa club which has some gorgeous, gorgeous sofas and they do little samples so I ordered some samples so we could feel the texture because Sam has this thing about textures like every texture needs to feel kind of soft so I thought if we ordered some samples, we could see colours in real life and textures. And some of them came today. I only ordered two because there was two that I liked most and that Sam liked as well. So I'm going to show you them quickly. So we ordered this one, which I'm, I think this one is the Soft Touch Easy Clean. And this is called Salted Caramel. I think I prefer this colour just because I feel like if we have a really whitey beige, the risk of spilling something on that or even like a tiny mark we're really going to be able to see and i know sam's like very minimalistic very tidy very clean i know if there was like one speck of dirt he would only notice that so i feel like the color of this one's wrong um this one was dry martini um and that's in the chiswick chanel and this one is the easy clean soft touch and salted caramel um, Sam's yet to see these, but I think I personally prefer this one. It's a very soft, luxurious feeling material. I love that it's an easy clean as well, which is perfect. And I just feel like that colour is better at masking dirt. We can always have some like cosy throws, like knit this colour over the top if we want some lighter features. Um, but I was just so excited about them. Um, we've had a look on the website and they do have the ones that we like in stock so once we have a move-in date we may order that but the sofa club um the sofas on that are really really gorgeous so take a look um but yeah what do you guys think do you prefer like the soft like salted caramel darker color or do you prefer the more textured i do like the texture i just don't think sam will like it and obviously the color is just not very practical um, but this is quite gorgeous as well. It's much thicker, it feels thicker and sturdier, this material. Whereas that one's a lot more flimsy and soft. This is a bit like suede sort of texture. 
it's quite gorgeous. Anyway, let's get on with cooking dinner. So I thought I would make a mushroom and spinach carbonara. I'm really fancying pasta, I think it's because it's like all cozy. Um, I always use this cream just because I seem to have issues with dairy cream. So this is my favorite dairy-free cream. I know this is dairy, but I seem to be okay with cheese. I'm not too sure what that is about. Um, I know there's like different levels of intolerance. Um, but yes, I'm gonna have a nice easy dinner. So we're gonna have spinach, mushrooms, carbonara little thing going on. Um, I found the recipe on Tesco. Tesco has like such good recipes if you're looking for new recipe ideas. And then obviously some garlic bread. So let's begin. I think we should put a playlist on. I was gonna listen to a podcast. I was I wanted to listen to a girl's the girls' bathroom podcast, but I think I am up to date with all of their podcasts at the moment. If you've not listened to their podcast, listen to them. They are so funny. It's like <laughs> what's that magazine? Shout magazine. Does anyone remember that when you were kids? If you're from the UK. And it would have like girly gossip. It's kind of like that, but for like mid-20s. People like write in about their girl drama and boy drama. Um, let's try autumn playlist, autumn vibes 2020. We will listen to that now before we start grooming. Grooming? Before we start cooking. Autumn playlist. recipe below if you're anything like me and you like cooking I always like tweak stuff to make it how I want it but it's really delicious um, so it's just mushroom and spinach and I also got some garlic bread mm. last night I decided that I was home alone I actually hate being home alone like my mum lives in quite a big house and it freaks me out so much so I was like I need to watch something comforting I normally repeat what I watch. I always watch like 8 out of 10 cats. Um, Taskmaster, Sex and City, I literally repeat everything. Um, but I decided to watch Gilmore Go Girls because apparently that's like an autumnal, cozy, comforting season thing. And I watched three episodes and I am not the sort of person to binge watch anything. I get too bored. I literally watch one episode and I'm like bored now. Um, so I started watching that. And I love it. It gives me like friends sort of vibes. It's very comforting, relaxing, like chill sort of evening. I love it. I feel like we should all start the series together. I'm on episode three now. Yeah, episode three. So I'm gonna eat my dinner and watch episode three of Gimmel Girls. 